Hey everyone, so last week I showed you some of the equipment and techniques I use to put together my metal detecting videos every single week and a lot of you commented asking me to do another video on the editing side of the process. So, I'm Adam, this is my metal detector. Hold on a second. There we go. I'm Adam, this is my metal detector. And this is Behind the Scenes Part 2, Post-Production. Welcome to Detect Sussex. Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of Detect Sussex. Last week I did a behind the scenes episode for you showing you the equipment and some of the techniques I use to film my metal detecting adventures um, that I bring out once a week for you. Um, a lot of you got in touch in the comment section down below and on Facebook and Instagram um, saying that you love the episode and you really, really, really wanted me to do an episode on the editing side of things. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to show you the editor that I use to put my videos together. And I'm going to give you a few basic editing skills that you can use on any editor to put together your own video, should you wish. Um, now, before we get into that, I've got a couple of big announcements to make. Number one, as of last week, I passed the 1,000 subscriber milestone on YouTube. So we now have over 1,000 subscribers to Detect Sussex. If you are subscribed, thank you. You are part of that number. And it's a really, really big milestone to have met. I'm really, really pleased to be there. Um, if you haven't subscribed, good opportunity. Now's your chance. Drop a, a click on the subscribe button down below and you'll join that number. Um, now, a while ago, I did say when I hit it, 1,000 subscribers, I would do a giveaway. And I've just ordered the prizes for that giveaway. So they'll be here in a couple of weeks' time. So in the next couple of weeks, I'll do a video, a competition video, and you'll have your chance to win some exclusive Detect Sussex goodies. The other announcement actually relates to one of the bits of gear I showed you in my video last week. You may remember I showed you this. This is my uh, rucksack that I use to carry all my filming gear and metal detecting gear when I'm out in the field or on the beach. Um, it's made by a company called Modern Day Athlete and they're actually a small local business to me so I want to support them as much as I can. That's why I gave them a little plug last week and I really, really enjoy using this bag. It's waterproof, it's ripproof, it's brilliant. They actually got in touch with me during the week after I released my video and gave me a website link um, which if you follow it will give you 10% off anything on their website. So I'll drop that link down in the uh, comment, sorry, in the description down below the video. So if you want to grab yourself a bag like this, save yourself a little bit of money, the, uh, the link's down there, follow that and that'll get you 10% off. So let's get into the video. What do I use to edit my videos? Well, you can use a mobile phone based app to edit your videos and a lot of people do. I personally edit on my laptop um, and I use a piece of software called HitFilm. Um, there are two versions of HitFilm. There's HitFilm Pro and there's HitFilm Express. HitFilm Pro is uh, a few hundred pounds and it's a complete professional editing suite. I don't use that. I use HitFilm Express, which is completely free. Okay, and it's got everything you need and more to put together a metal detecting video. There are some add-ons you can get, some extra features you can buy and bolt on to the software and I have done a few of those but you don't need any of them to put together a metal detecting video. So let's jump onto the laptop now and I'll show you the software and give you a few skills and techniques uh, so you can start editing your own videos yourself. So this is the HitFilm interface. There's a few windows here I'm going to draw your attention to. You can move these about and put them in any configuration you'd like. You can change the size and everything. This is the setup I prefer. 
So on the top left here where my mouse is, this is the media panel. This is where we import the clips that we want to use in our video. Uh, the next tab along is the controls panel and I'll show you that a little later on. That's uh, where we can change the parameters of the clips that we're using. Um, the others will come into play at different points depending on what you're doing. This panel in the middle here is the effects panel. We can add uh, all sorts of different effects to our clips from here. And if you want to add text, there's the uh, text editor tool there as well. Moving over to the top right, we've got our viewer. This is where we view the video that we're putting together. And down the bottom here, we have our timeline. Now it's split between video up here and audio down here. So if you import a video clip, this is where your video footage will be and the audio uh, clip for that footage will appear directly below it in the audio section. The last little uh, window I need to show you is over here. It's probably blocked by me slightly, but it's the meters and that'll just give you the, uh, the decibels for the audio that your video is playing. So you can check it's not gonna overload the speakers. So that's the basic tour. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do, I've got some clips ready prepared. These are clips from um, the last time I was at the Manor House. Um, and I've also got a few of my usual assets in there as well. So all I, all I need to do to put these into the editor is select them all in the folder and just drag them over into the media panel and they'll all load up. Now, when I record on my phone, the, um, the file names are the date and the time. You can see that there, there's the date, there's the time. So the clips actually import in alphabetical order, alphanumeric order. So that's really useful, it means I can when I'm doing a normal video, um, import all of them. I can just select all of the clips and put them all in. And you can see the assets are there at the bottom as well. So to start editing, there's two ways that you can put a clip down into the timeline for editing. The easiest way is simply to select it and then drag it down and put it where you want it, just there. The other way is if you double click on the media, it'll open this trimmer window. And you can use that to play through the clips before you put them on the timeline. This is a slow motion clip I did of my simplex just on the top of the hill at the manor house. You can see that playing through. Now, to trim this down, you find the point where you want to start. I think that intro is probably a little bit too long. So I'm going to start the clip about about there. And you can set an in point there. And then you go to the end of the clip where you want the clip to end, I think about there, and then you can set an out point. And then once you set that little duration there, you can grab the clip and just drag it onto the timeline as is. So similar principle, but you can trim it before you put it on the timeline. If you prefer to trim it once it's on the timeline, you can still do that. Hover your mouse over the edge, you get this little uh, bracket symbol come up, and you can just resize the clip that way. So you've got both options and both are useful in different ways. Now I've already trimmed this second clip down so I'm going to put that at the front. This is a little bit of uh, establishing b-roll so this is a little bit of landscape um, b-roll just to sort of set the scene at the beginning of my video to keep people uh, interested and kind of tell people what kind of a video to expect. So we'll just play that through. It's a nice slow motion shot of my simplex next to a tree on the hill. Lovely stuff. What I'll do then is I'll add my intro clip, which is this one. Now I'm going to drag it in. And uh, as with a lot of my uh, videos, put my headphones on, uh, a lot of my videos, the it takes me a few attempts to uh, <laughs> actually get the intro done. So I'm going to find the point in the clip where I make my last attempt, which is usually the one I use, which is about there. You can see down the bottom in this audio section, you've got a little waveform and I can see there's a little bit of silence there and that just helps me to find the exact place. So I'm gonna go over here and drag that over just to trim that clip down. And then I'm gonna to go to the end and do the same thing. You can see there's a little bit of uh, me playing with the camera at the end there, so. The D-Tech Sussex. I think about them. So I'm just gonna come back there and stop the, stop the footage there, trim it down. And there we have our clip. Now I'm going to uh, stick that up against the first clip and as you can see these red guidelines appear as you uh, as you approach it so it attaches it directly to it, you're not going to overlap or anything like that. And then we can uh, play through the clip and check it's okay. Hey everyone, so the second lockdown has been lifted so we're allowed back out on private land once again. So I There we go. So that's the basics of laying out your clips. I'm going to put the rest of my clips 
into the timeline just in the same way as before I can select them all in on bulk and just drop them in now I've got one clip of me finding my silver coin a second clip of me giving a bit more information about that silver coin after I'd gone away and googled it and then on the end here I've got my bullet tip and then finally I've got a little bit of extra landscape b-roll so what I'm going to do is this is the way I usually lay things out there's my initial bit of b-roll there is my intro I'm just going to move these clips down a little bit I then have my uh, titles clip which I'll pop into there you all know this by now and then I'll probably put this bit of landscape b-roll after that titles clip it gives it just a little bit of extra um, sense of the scenery and where I am and then I can just drag these clips over and lay them out like that and then all I need to do is play through and just give them a little trim as I go so there's the b-roll so that's where it stops I think we'll stop it there and I'll just trim that down Is that too long? Let's have a little look. That might be a little bit too long. So I'm going to move the playhead back a little bit to where I think I want it to start. And again, just trim it down and it'll snap to that playhead when I get there. And then I can just drag that back over. I'm going to zoom into the timeline a little bit so we can get a bit more detail. There we are. Next clip. Let's have a little look at this one. Okay, I've just turned the camera on. I haven't looked at this yet at all. I had a screaming signal coming up at 70. Knocked the, uh, the clod over. Had a little rummage. And over here, we have a coin of some description. So I know, because I've watched this clip before, I know that this clip is absolutely fine. There's no second takes or anything in there, so I can use that. Now, when you're recording your clips out in the field, it's always a good idea to leave a couple of seconds on the start and a couple of seconds at the end, because then you can just trim the clip down. Okay, I've so I'm going to go back to slightly before I start speaking, and then I can just trim that clip down from there. Then I'm going to go to the end. Okay, just a second, I'll just double check that. So I think I'll stop it there, it's quite close to the edge, but we'll just trim that down there. And then drag it along. Quite a simple process, quite easy, uh, easy to do, easy to follow, easy to learn. Now, every uh, transition between the clips so far has been quite sudden if you watch the first bit hey everyone so the second lockdown let's watch that again hey everyone so the second so that's quite a sudden change um this is a standard cut you'd use this in most uh films tv that kind of thing if you're doing a conversation or just a change of camera angle it's quite a, a quick and easy way of doing that but in clips when you're doing a metal detecting video it's quite often that the background will background noise will change like this clip here Hey everyone, so it's quite a sudden change. So what I tend to do is use transitions, and Hitfilm's got a few. Go down to the bottom of the effects panel here, go to the video, and we've got audio transitions as well. So the way to just soften the change in the audio is if you use a crossfade under the audio side of things, drag it over there, and you can hear the difference now. Hey everyone, so the so it just ramps the two volumes together so that it just smooths things out. You don't get that sudden change. Now you can use the uh, so can leave the video as just a sudden sudden cut like that. Hey everyone, so the if you second. want to, or what I tend to do is use something like a cross dissolve. If you chuck that over there, just over that join. Hey everyone, so the second. Just gives you a little fade in between the two clips. It just makes it look a little bit nicer. Uh, on the eye on the viewer. Um, the great thing about these transitions is you can make them longer or shorter if you want just by dragging them. So you really can customize these transitions to anything you want. Uh, other transitions we've got in here you can use. Um, we've got quite a few motion ones, wipes and zooms. I tend to use the clock wipe quite a lot and I'll show you where I'd use that in this uh, this little footage where we've got my coin, so I've got first half of me finding the coin and then trying to identify it. and at the end I say I'm going to go away and Google it just to see whether it's silver or not and if I bring my other clip in here okay so I've done a bit of Googling 
and I've checked the composition of a 1932 one shilling coin and it is indeed silver. It so we've got this other clip so it's a quite a sharp change as well like it was before. Almost every clip I do I will add the crossfade for the audio just because it softens the audio and it makes it a little bit nicer to listen to. Okay so I've done a bit of goo. And for this transition here, because it's essentially the same find, but a little bit of time has passed, I'll usually use the clock wipe transition. Just drop it in, and that just gives the viewer a little sense that some time has passed in between the two clips. So if I just frame by frame go through that. So you can see the new footage underneath is revealed in a sort of a clock style. And it just gives the viewer a little sense that some time has passed um, as you go through. So you can go through your entire clip, you can trim them down, lay them out as you want, and you can add transitions in between. And that is the basics of setting up your own metal detecting video. Okay, so I've just finished putting the transitions into the clips that I've just shown you. Um, I've put a, just a cross dissolve and a cross fade on the video and audio lines, respectively, just to the end there. And uh, I'll just quickly play through just the transition so you can see. Hey everyone, so the second look. A little bit laggy because of the uh, amount that's going on. But Get into the titles, into some uh, location B-roll. And into the first clip. Okay, I've just turned the camera on. I haven't looked at this yet at all. I and then we've got that clock wipe into the second part of the silver coin. Okay, so I've done a bit of Googling. And then another crossfade into the last find. Onward. All right, okay, I'm pleased with this find. Um, I found... And that's it. So on the end here, I'm going to stick my usual outro. For that kind of land. And again, I'm going to stick a crossfade on the audio and a cross dissolve on the video. Here you go. Obviously there'll be different sections to my videos, I'll do a roundup at the end, that kind of thing. This is just for illustration today. A couple of other controls you've got. You can see these white lines on the video and audio uh, sections here. If I just go to that clip, the, uh, the white line on the video is for the opacity. So it shows you how much you can see through the clip and drag that up and down and on the audio that's the volume now the volume on this as you can see at the bottom of that blue box says 0, 0.00 that is the recorded volume of the clip if you move it down it goes quieter if you move it above that it'll go louder up to a maximum of 12 uh, but 0 is the the default that is the recorded volume now if you want to get a bit more precision with editing properties of the clips if you click on the clip to highlight it go up to the controls panel up here and you've got a few options this is the opacity I was telling you about so we can control that up and down and you can type into these numbers so if you just want to reduce it by 50 percent you can do that um, and the volume You'll have to click on the audio clip first. There we go. And there's the volume or the level. And again, drag it up and down, and you can type it in as well. So we'll leave it at its default, but there you go. That's the uh, just to show you those uh, controls. Now, we'll show you how you can change this kind of thing um, over a period of time in just a minute. We'll cover keyframing in just a minute. What I'm going to do now is make this, uh, this little sequence look better than it does already. If you record on a smartphone especially, it'll do what it can to make the clips look as good as they can, but we can always make them look better. So in an editor like this, we can do what's known as color correction. I'm gonna just go back to my effects panel here. And we've got a color correction section here. And what I find, this again, these things will be on most video editors. If you just drop a little bit of contrast onto the clip, this is how you um, add an effect by the way, just drop it down onto the clip, let go and on the controls panel up here you'll have more controls for the effect you've just added. Um, you can then go brightness and contrast. All I do, look at the, uh, the viewer, all I do is I just up the contrast just by a tiny bit and already that looks even better than it did before, maybe just a little bit more. If you find the contrast controls on your editor and just use those 
instantly your footage will look better. Now what you can do with hit film is you can highlight that effect in the controls panel. You can copy it, right click on any other clip, it's going to go over here so you can see the difference, and then paste it onto there, and it'll apply the same effect. So I'm going to do that, I'm going to copy, I'm going to use keyboard shortcut, control C, and I'm just going to highlight the other clips, not my titles because I know that looks good already, and not my outro, just leave that as it is, and I'm going to hit paste. And then that brightness effect, that uh, contrast effect rather, has been applied to the entire clip. And suddenly it looks so much better. So much clearer. The other thing you might want to consider doing, especially if you've got a lot of sort of greenery in your clips, is looking at the hue, saturation and lightness effect. I'll just drop that in there. And you can change the overall saturation of the clip. Or you can take it down if you want something a little bit... Uh, Different. If I click the clip, you'll be able to see. There we go. I put that on the wrong clip. There we go. Okay. So we're looking at this clip, and there is the saturation control. So you can bring that up, or bring it all the way down if you want a sort of black and white effect, or leave it in the middle, if you wish. You can also adjust individual colours. So if you've got a lot of greenery in your clip, go to green, and you can up the saturation slightly. If you've got a lot of grass in your scene, go to yellow and do the same thing. That'll actually have a, a bigger effect than the green. And if you want it to look a little greener, you can do the hue shift, usually on yellow, and you can change the colour. You can make it go crazy. <laughs> or if you just adjust it ever so slightly, you can make the grass look a lot greener, a lot more lush. And it just, just looks a little bit better for the viewer. Mind. Um, I found one of these the first week. There we are. So if I take that effect off, you can see the difference. That's what it was before, and that's what it is afterwards. And it just looks so much better. So I'm going to take that uh, effect. Where was the effect I put on to that other clip just now? I think it was over here. Yes, yeah, so I'll put that on by mistake. I'm going to just delete that. And go back to this clip, copy the hue, saturation, lightness, and attach that to all of the other clips. There we go. And then it looks a lot better, a lot more attractive. There we are. So that's just a little little tip you can do. Add the transitions in and you can change the, the colour and the contrast. Just up the colour and contrast just a little bit on all your clips and the entire video, the entire bit of footage will look so much more professional and a little bit more cinematic as well. Let's move on to keyframing and I'll show you how to make things move in HitFilm. Okay, so there's the basics of editing a few clips together and making them look fantastic for your YouTube video. Now I'm going to cover how to make things move in HitFilm, and that's using a technique known as keyframing. Um, to do that, I've got a couple of uh, pieces of media in the media panel here. One is the logo background that I use, the blue camouflage background that I use for my logo, and the other one is the just a transparent version of the DTEK Sussex logo itself. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open a composite shot. Now, the timeline we use down here, this is what will be exported into your YouTube video at the end, the complete video. And um, we call this the editor. You can see a tab here called editor. If you go up here and click new and click composite shot, I'll give you a few options to choose from. Uh, I'm just going to make sure that's correct. So we actually want that to be 1080 on the height. That's just standard ratio. And then we'll OK. That will give us a new timeline. You can see a brand new timeline down here, slightly different uh, interface on the left here, and we're in a composite shot. Composite shot one, there's a little tab there, and you can go back to the editor by clicking on that tab, a little bit like your, uh, your web, web browser. Um, so let's go back into the composite shot. What I'm going to do, these are just images, still images. I'm going to drop the logo camo file in, and I can adjust the size of that. So I'll select the file, go to the controls, and we can play about with the scale. Let's see, do we want to make it bigger or smaller? 
there we are so just adjusting the parameters there until it's where I think I like it let's have it about there I think now you'll notice on the scale there's this little chain link button here and that means that as I move this parameter the other parameter moves as well this is the width this is the height if you want to distort the image and just move one of those just click the link the central section will disappear and you can stretch it and move it out in whichever axis you wish I'm just going to undo that put it back to where I had it so the links back in um, other options here you can rotate the objects let's put that back uh, you can change its position so again move it left and right move it up and down now the rotating rotation and position parameters you can actually change by using these options here on the screen itself so you can do it with the numbers or you can do it by dragging these little handles on the footage as well and this does rotation so you can get some fairly precise options there just put that back to, to the start and that's basically all you need to know for this I'm going to go back to the media panel and grab my logo now a very basic way of making this logo appear would be just to drop it on the timeline a few frames after the start and just have it suddenly appear boom like that Let's make it a bit more interesting, shall we? I'm going to just adjust the size a little bit of that. Oh, that's the background. There we go. That's the uh, that's the logo. I'm going to make it nice and big. There we go, right in the middle there. Now there's a few things we can do. We can change the opacity so we can make it go from completely invisible to completely opaque. Uh, over the course of a few frames and we do this using keyframing so what is a keyframe if I just expand these options down here you can see the same controls up here are down here this is one of the major differences with a composite shot you can have a lot more control right there on the timeline um, so what I'm going to do I'm going to move the playhead back to the start of the clip so just where the logo would appear um, in fact, I'm actually going to move it right to the start of the entire clip. That makes things a bit easier. So right to the very beginning, and we're going to click on the opacity option. You can do this down here or up here. It does exactly the same thing, and you'll see these little white rings to the left of the controls. Anything that's got this can be keyframed. So if you click on that white ring, a little dot appears in the middle, and the ring goes blue. And that has put a little diamond on the timeline. I'm going to zoom in a little bit to make this a little clearer. Okay, so we've got a little diamond here. And what that does is it sets at that moment this parameter's value. So at this point, it's going to be 100% opaque. We don't want it to be 100% opaque at the start, so I'm just going to take that down all the way to the bottom so that's completely invisible on the timeline. Now, I'm going to go ahead a few frames, probably just a second or so, and now that blue ring still lit, but there's no dot. That indicates that keyframing is active, but there's no keyframe on that particular frame. If I then change the value, the dot will appear in that ring. So that means that at this point, the logo is completely invisible. At this point, the logo is 100% opaque. And what the system will do is it'll gradually change the value from one to another. So if I go to the start, and hit play it goes from being invisible to being opaque so that's a nice very quick very easy way of making something appear on the screen if you want something a little bit more dynamic you can have it come in perhaps shrink from no size whatsoever up to being full size and we can do that now I'm going to delete these keyframes gone so now it's just back to our normal footage and at that start I'm going to hit the scale and I'm going to keyframe that so at the start, we want it to be absolutely nothing. So I'm going to take the scale down to zero. And then I'm going to come just a few frames ahead, say 20 frames ahead. And I'm going to change that back up to the size I want the logo to be. So we'll put it about there. And same thing, it'll just change between those values, between those keyframes nice and easy now you can change the type of keyframe that is there I won't take you through them all but one common one I use um, is this one here it's a it's called a smooth keyframe so at the minute the value is zero the value is 168 and it'll just move completely uniform from one to the other if you highlight them and then choose this smooth keyframe 
it'll just smooth the movement out at the start and end, just makes it look a little bit more professional. So if I play that now, just gives it a slight edge. One other thing you can do with this is if I go back to that keyframe there, I can change that to being slightly bigger than I want it to be. About there. And if I move forward just two or three frames, and then set another keyframe back to where I, I want it to end up, you'll end up with a bit of a bounce. So if I play that through, there we go. So there's just a few options there. That's basically how keyframing works. And you can keyframe any parameter of the clip. You can change change the position. You can make it move up and down, left and right, up and you know, just anything. Anything on, on the side here that has these rings you can keyframe and change the value over time. So that's a really, really good way of adding extra value to your videos and uh, just giving a bit more interest to the audience. Right, so one effect that I use in HitFilm a lot in my videos is motion tracking. Motion tracking is a way of putting an object into the footage so that it appears to be in the environment that you're filming. Uh, you can also use it to attach things to objects. I use it to put the heads up display onto the coins that I find. Um, I also use it to put my logo into the uh, into the, the scene uh, just before I do my roundup at the end of the video. So I'm gonna show you a clip similar to that today and a little exercise we can do to show you the motion tracking um, that HitFilm can do. And again, this is in the free version. This is the HitFilm Express version. So I'm gonna put this footage into the media panel. There we go. So we've got a little clip of my shed, me walking towards my shed. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna trim that down as I showed you earlier. Probably make it about five seconds long. There we go. I'm gonna set an out point there. And we'll start at the beginning. And there's our in point. And I'm just gonna drag that down into the editor. So there we are, me walking towards the shed. Now that's quite close. That's not zoomed out as much as the original footage. That tells me that the frame is actually bigger than the, the viewer is allowing. So I can go right click on this and go transform. We'll go fit to frame width. There we go, and that's fit the uh, the footage to the uh, to the frame. So there we have it. So in order to use the motion tracking feature, I need to change this into another composite shot. And one way of doing that is if once you've got your footage on the timeline, if you right click on it, you can go to this option here, make a composite shot, and it will open up a composite shot automatically with the footage that you've selected. So here we are in a new composite shot. You can tell that because we're in a new tab. And here's our footage, all trimmed down, ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my logo here and I'm gonna place it on the door. And I'm gonna motion track it so that it stays on the door and stays in proportion with the door and the shed as I walk towards it. So to do that, I need to create a point layer. Now a point layer is an invisible layer, you won't see it, but it is a way of storing information. And I'll show you what I mean. If I go to the basic layer, the, the shed layer, go up to the controls for that layer, there's a tracking option here. So I hit the green cross for that, and that takes us into motion tracking mode. All I'm gonna do is record the motion tracking data in this mode, and then we're gonna put that data into the point layer. I can then bring my logo in, and tell that logo layer to look at the point layer to source its movement and scale and rotation information from it. So we've created our point, we've gone into our tracking mode, we've got a tracking panel that's opened up in the top left here, and the viewer has switched over to the layer panel. Now what this does, it just shows you the layer you're tracking. So if you've got loads of different layers in a composite already, it'll strip all of those away just in this one view so you can see just the features that you want to track. In the center of the screen, if I zoom in, we've got this little tracking marker. Uh, now you can resize this. We've got a red square and a green square. The red square is going to indicate the feature that we want HitFilm to track, and the green square is indicating the area that we want HitFilm to look at to find that feature. So I'm going to put this over top of this padlock. Just adjust the size ever so slightly. 
just there. And I'm going to make the green box a little bigger. Essentially, what you want is for the green box to be big enough so that from one frame to the next, the padlock isn't going to jump outside of that green square. So I'm going to just make it a bit bigger about there. will be absolutely fine. Now, one tracking marker will give you left and right and up and down information. So X axis and Y axis. What we want, because we're walking towards the shed, is we want the logo to be getting bigger, so we want scale to, be, to change, and we also want the rotation to change, because it's a handheld shot, you're not going to be perfectly level all the time. So we're going to go over to the tracking panel and change single point to double points, and then that will give us a second tracking marker. So I just need to find a feature that's roughly parallel with this first marker, which I think this knot in the wood over here is going to be absolutely fine. And I'm just going to move this marker over, resize it around that feature, just like that. And again, move this green box so that it's got plenty of room for the software to keep up. Now, down this little drop down here is going to rescale the window for me so we can see the full footage. And you can see the two tracking markers are now in place. Go to the tracking panel over here, and we've got some options. This will advance the footage one frame, this will go back one frame, and this will just play through the footage from start to finish, and then play through the footage from finish to start, if you wish. Depending on the, the clip you're doing, the kind of effect you're doing, you, it may be better to do from the end backwards. Um, I'm just gonna hit play, and that is gonna record our tracking data as we go. So you can see as the footage is moving, those tracking points are moving with it, they're moving with those features. Um, and you can see the little blue lines appearing in the, in the trails. Um, those are little X's that the software is putting in, which is indicating the position of the features as they move. So there we go, we just let that play out. And as soon as it gets to the end of the clip, it'll automatically stop recording. So we'll play, scrub back through that, and you can see the tracking markers are moving with the features and moving along those blue lines. So that's the tracking data. Those blue lines are our tracking data. Now we need to apply that to our point layer. And to do that, I'm gonna hit the rotation and scale checkboxes here. So we're gonna have X and Y position, and we're gonna have rotation, and we're gonna have scale information that we're putting into the point layer. Go to the layer dropdown, hit the point, and then hit apply. Tracking data is now in that point layer. Now I'm gonna scoot over back to the viewer so we can see our entire composite and not just that one layer. And I can go to our media panel and take the logo and drop it onto the timeline just at the start there and position it where I want it. So I think we'll put it here, roughly in between those two tracking markers. I'm gonna make it slightly bigger. And it's a little bit off in terms of rotation. So I'm just gonna adjust that a little bit. Let's say about there, I think. And I'll just scooch it over ever so slightly. Okay, now if I scrub through the timeline now, you'll see the logo stays exactly where it is. It doesn't change shape, size, or position. So that's not what we want. If we go to the logo options down here, we can select this drop down and then tell it to look at the point layer. And that will tell it to use the data that we've saved in there. Now if I scrub through, the logo appears to be stuck onto the wood. Now there's a couple of things you can do just to sell this effect a little bit more. You can hit this icon here and activate it, and that is the motion blur. So if the object moves more than a few pixels uh, within one shot, it will just blur slightly and just add to the realism and add to the effects and the um, to the audience that it's actually in the shot. The other thing I like to do is to go up to blurs and use the diffuse option. And you can just drag that down onto the timeline. And if you watch the logo as I let go, it just blurs it slightly just around the edges. And it just means that it feels like it's in there. It doesn't feel like it's just been stuck on the top. It feels like it's in the shot. Um, you can then adjust things like the opacity a little bit just to make it blend in a little bit further. And there you have it. That's how you stick a logo into your footage. So what I'll do is I'll render that out so you can see a clip of that in action once it's fully 
fully rendered and uh, and playable. Um, and what I'm going to do now is head out into the garden and show you just a few of the more advanced visual effects that you can stick into your videos. I love putting visual effects into my videos. They're not necessary at all for metal detecting videos, but I like to do them. It's kind of my thing. So I'm going to go out and have a little bit of fun and uh, show you a few special effects out there. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in a moment. So that's just a bit of fun to show you the power of HitFilm Express. Don't forget, it's a completely free bit of software, and I'll drop a link in the description where you can download it for yourself. Um, if you want to learn it from scratch, just type in HitFilm Tutorial into YouTube, and there's plenty of tutorials there from beginner to intermediate and advanced to show you how to use it. Um, the tips I've given you today will work across multiple editors on different platforms, whether on desktop or mobile. The principles of just cutting clips together, using transitions and the importance of using transitions, especially for metal detecting videos, um, and also just tweaking the contrast and color to make the footage look just that little bit better. Next week, I've got a test planned for the Simplex. I'll be testing not only the depth, but also the sensitivity of the machine. Uh, so we'll see what the results are for that. Um, I've got the link in the description for Modern Day Athlete if you'd like to pick yourself up a brand new bag for 10% off. And don't forget, in a couple of weeks' time, I'll be doing a competition, a giveaway for my 1,000 subscribers milestone. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button down below the video. Have a fantastic week, and I'll see you soon. Take care.